You ever been really motivated in the new year? So you start going to the gym, going on some runs, only to fall completely off your routine just a few weeks later? Yeah, I mean, basically every year. I think a big reason why most of us fall off is because we're not actually enjoying our routine. If you can only lace up those Nikes and hit the pavement when you're feeling super motivated, guess what happens when you're not feeling motivated? Not good. <laughs> no bueno. <laughs> Nothing. Nothing happens. <laughs> Couch happens. <laughs> A smarter way to train your body is to have fun and be inspired by a goal. Having a little something to keep chipping away at gives us desire, hope, and motivation to keep going. So here are 10 movements that we've had a lot of fun unlocking over the years that I think could give you a nice spark if you take on the challenge. So depending on your current capabilities and the shape that you're in, some of these might sound easy, some of them might sound really challenging. We think the ones that are more challenging, the ones that you'll have to work really hard for are actually more rewarding in the end. Here we go. First off, we have the cartwheel. And the cartwheel is super cool because anyone who's able-bodied can do a cartwheel physically. It's just a coordination thing. Yeah, you go to the park, you see like kids, they throw cartwheels like nothing. It's, it's, it's easy, but as we get older, like we lose that coordination, there becomes some, some fear maybe. It's, it's, it, be, it becomes more scary. Yeah, I mean, the ground is hard. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and your head comes pretty close to it. But man, it's super good for like your nervous system to to change orientation to go upside down that's not something we do regularly yeah shifts your perspective another good thing that cartwheels do that we don't do much if you're just doing more traditional fitness makes you side bend oh yeah you move your like your core to the side like this think about how often do you do that in everyday life but it's something that your body can do and should do what's an easy way to start if it's scary i'd say the easiest way is to do a cartwheel but your feet never really leave the ground so you just put your hands on the ground you step Step and you step. Yeah, step and you step. <laughs> I'm sure we'll show it on screen. <laughs> Another easy way is just to practice the patterning. So it goes foot, hand, hand, foot. Yep. And then it's just a matter of building up courage, feeling safe to actually go all the way upside down and get your cartwheel. When you're first learning, find a nice piece of grass. It'll make you feel a little safer. Next up, we have the 60 second hang from a bar or a tree branch or rings or whatever you got to hang from. Talk about uh, something that kids can do pretty naturally. I mean, monkey bars. I remember I couldn't do monkey bars when I was powerlifting. That's something that I definitely overlooked at the time. It's in our human nature to be able to just hang. It's so good for the shoulders. It's really good for your, your full body, your spine. And if 60 second hang seems easy for you, you already hang, then I think doing some one arm hanging, one way that you could do this is by taking one arm away, slapping your pocket or your knee, and then switching arms. So it's almost like you're doing the monkey, monkey bars, bars and Thanks. you're getting that, <laughs> you're getting what we call brachiation, where it's like we're using our shoulders to kind of locomote us forward, like the great apes do. Is it the great apes that do that? Gibbons? Bonobos. A couple other benefits to hanging is also grip strength, which is really important for a lot of different activities. What else? Hanging can actually kind of precede pulling yourself up. So you want to get better at pull-ups, better be able to hang on a bar for a while. A lot of how we conceive of upper body strength is muscles in our arms and our chest, but we actually have a lot of muscles that move the shoulder blades. And so hanging a lot can actually work on those muscles, which are closer to the spine. They're, they may be more important than some of the bigger ones. Mm. Stop looking in the mirror, start hanging. Talk about going upside down. How about the shoulder roll? We've recently talked a lot about how important it is to develop a nice relationship to the ground. And if you can do a shoulder roll going upside down, controlling your body, articulating your spine to the ground, like you actually develop this functional core strength that yes, it's not the, the sit-ups and the hanging leg raises, but you can use it more and it's probably gonna help you be healthier for longer. And you also, Again, talking about the relationship with the ground, many people fear the ground, you fear falling, but if you have a good shoulder roll, you have an exit strategy. You know how to orient yourself if you do take a spill, which, I mean, we all do once in a while. Yeah, cue the video, and I... <laughs> ah! 
The cool thing about a shoulder roll is you can start on the ground already. You just put your shoulder on the ground and then you take that little leap and go over. There's almost no danger because you're starting close to the ground already. Yeah, if you find something really soft to do it on, either like a really soft piece of grass or if you happen to have access to like some nice mats at a gym or something like that, it really takes all of the risk out of it and you can just develop that movement easily. I made a video on a bunch of rolls that I did this year. Nobody really watched it, that's okay, but if you feel like checking it out, it'll be on the screen it's, somewhere. It's a sick video, <laughs> I'd highly recommend it. Next, a flexibility goal, getting your palms to the floor with your knees straight. If you're a bendy girl, this might be so, so easy for you, but if you're a stiffer gentleman who's maybe spent a lot of time lifting weights, this can be a, a really good task to take on and you'll unlock a lot of nice mobility. Having decent hamstring flexibility is I mean, the best way to take care of your back. We all want that healthy back. <laughs> back pain sucks. Obviously developing your flexibility in a bunch of different ways is gonna be really good for you and healthy. But it's nice to have some standards that we mm. can work towards. And that's why I really like the palms to floor because it's like, you can do it or you can't. And you can see how far away you are from it. And it just gives you like this goal to keep going for however long it takes you. Yeah, I think it's pretty cool because no matter how far away you're starting from this goal, like anyone can get to this goal. I don't know, I've seen some stiff fellas out there. <laughs> nah, just kidding, you're right, anyone, anyone can get it. Yeah, I think the best place to start is learning how to bend at your hips first. Mm. So like understanding how to lengthen the hamstrings and then really going for the forward fold, including the back. I agree. So what you're saying is learning how to hip hinge mm -hmm. and lengthen those hamstrings and then working on more of a forward fold. And you can work on them together at the same time as well. We actually have a great follow along hamstring stretching uh, flexible video. Watch it. <laughs> do it. Another flexibility goal that also takes a lot of strength is to skin the cat. And it works those muscles we were talking about earlier, the ones that control the shoulder blades. So it's not so much about the biceps. Yeah, skin the cat is a really fun one for anyone to unlock because it does take quite a bit of strength to pull your knees up. You basically go through a little bit of like a front lever tuck and you have to keep your arms straight. So like Trevor said, you can't use your biceps very much. And then you gotta invert, go upside down. Once again, we keep giving you guys upside down ones. <laughs> but then you have to pass through, go all the way to the other side and that takes a lot of shoulder mobility. Oof, yeah. This one is not to be taken lightly. You gotta work up to this. We actually made a pretty good tutorial on this a while back. We'll link it on the screen. If higher level calisthenics goals like levers or like front or back lever are interesting to you, this is where you start. And another one that kids can really naturally do, but <laughs> us as adults, we're like, whoa, uh, what's going on here with my shoulder? <laughs> so exposing your shoulders to like a lot of different positions and having to actually be stable in them, it's probably one of the best ways to bulletproof your shoulders. That's a good point. I know. And probably one of the most challenging ones on this list, a five to 10 second handstand. This can take anywhere from a couple months to maybe a full year for some people. I mean, yeah, it took me a year. Everyone's gone to the beach and tried some kickups before, so it may seem like it's pretty easy, but actually holding a static handstand in place is very hard. And I think that's why having the goal of five to 10 seconds means that you're actually holding it and not just slowly falling out of it. <laughs> <laughs> the mistake we see people make all the time is just like trying to kick up and kick up in the middle of the room instead of using the wall. Don't be hard headed. You got to take some steps to get to the handstand and doing holds on the wall is gonna be one of the best ways to build up your strength, build up your balance and your confidence. We have a few great handstand tutorials. If you're a complete beginner, we have one that's great for that. So we'll link that in the description or on the screen. Take care of your wrists. It's a lot on the wrist. Yeah. <laughs> to me, one of the best parts about taking on the handstand as a goal is you really start to understand your body better mm. like you have to become very aware of the internal environment because you have to learn basically how to go into one shape and then stay there but it takes so much like core strength and shoulder strength and an awareness to to actually get into that shape yeah one thing I, that I've said before is that it, like it's hard enough to have good posture when you're just standing on two feet these days can you have good posture while you're upside down on your hands that's like a whole nother level but handstands are so cool because 
you can just train them anywhere. Like you don't need any equipment. You can go out to the park and do it. If you have to travel, if you travel for work or something, all you need is like some ground in your hotel room or in the gym or wherever. And although the handstand is challenging, it's actually not too taxing on your body. So like you could put it in at the end of a workout, you get done squatting, do some handstands. True. And if you are going to the gym, it could be a perfect activity to do in between your gym sessions as mm. like a your recovery day, but you can just still just practice some handstands. Handstands, do them. 2023, handstands, do them. The muscle up is probably one of the most iconic calisthenics movements mm. and for good reason. It's quite challenging, but also it's one of those ones that really anyone could do as long as you can do some pull-ups, some dips, you can definitely get it. Even though it's really hard, it's actually like a pretty foundational strength movement for doing calisthenics or gymnastics or anything really. Yeah, it may be the first time that you've thought about like a strength movement that's also really skill oriented too. Yeah. It's something that you'll need to practice the technique of a lot and also probably get stronger as well. Like you said, there's probably so many people out there that are strong enough to do it, but you also have to like get this weird strength of the transition piece, which is like th the hardest because it involves coordination. It involves more of like a specific strength there. So you just have to work a lot on that and then eventually it comes. Yeah, and there's also, there's a timing component too, that's like, that's unique. If you only have done static strength exercises before, you've never had to think about timing. Yeah. Uh, it's very similar if you've ever done any like Olympic lifts, there's very much a timing component there. There's so much skill built into that. So much like just time and effort spent on actually like working on the skill. But then once you have it, once you have the timing, you always have it. Yeah, I agree. It's a bit more like athletic than just doing a pull up. Another cool thing to muscle ups is you could do multiple variations. Now you can do them on the rings or on a bar and they each have their own challenges. The rings you may need to be a little more flexible for. The bar you may need to be a little stronger for, mm. but ultimately whatever one you choose, it's gonna be a really fun challenge. Yeah, yeah. Also great part to a muscle up is it's high bang for your buck. So, you know, it's gonna take a lot longer to do three sets of pull-ups and then three sets of dips versus a muscle-up, you're getting pulling and pushing in the same movement. So you just do three sets of muscle-ups and you just blasted a lot of your muscles and it didn't take that much time. It's also the beginning to unlocking a lot of like cool things you can do on the rings or the bar. Yeah. You need to be able to transition from below to above yeah. to be able to do the, uh, maybe some flows or things that you see on Instagram, on reels and stuff. And once you unlock the muscle up, it, be it becomes really fun to explore those avenues. Yeah, muscle up's one that could just lead to more and more, which, you know, the point of this video is talking about getting excited about your training and, and everything. So this is one that's definitely, handstand is the same, where oh, yeah. once you get it, then there's other things that you can do with it, which is fun, man. It's just fun, it's just fun. Do your muscle ups. So it's no secret that the muscle up is gonna favor people who are a bit stronger. This next one is gonna favor people who are a bit more flexible, and that's a bridge rotation. If you are a bit stiffer in the shoulders and the spine, this is a really good goal to take on. Yeah, the cool thing about the bridge rotation, I think this goes for a lot of the things we're presenting here, but it really forces you to work on some different components. Not only do you have to be bendy, but you have to be really strong in some of those muscles of the upper back to actually be able to push backwards. You know, it forces you to work on your mobility, your strength, your coordination, a bunch of stuff at once. So a bridge rotation is just a fancy way to move through a back bridge. So a back bridge or wheel pose in yoga, when you are have your belly facing up to the sky and you basically press your hands and your feet into the ground to make yourself in this arch shape. Like a bridge. Just like a Oh, that's why it's called that. Now we think bridges are cool, but actually bridge rotation is very nice because there's this movement component where you have to be able to control a lot of different angles, like Trevor said, throughout your shoulders, throughout your spine and your hips. You can't just rely on your flexibility here. <laughs> and what's even cooler is working on the bridge rotation can actually lead to some pretty cool higher level skills. Like maybe people have seen you do a makako before. It's kind of a foundational movement for being able to do that. True. The cool thing is if you want to unlock a bridge, 
I already said what the cool thing is. <laughs> we can't have yeah. more than one cool thing. <laughs> the awesome thing is <laughs> if you want to unlock a bridge rotation, but you're pretty stiff, you don't have a good bridge, that's okay. We can use a low bridge rotation, which is my favorite because I'm not the most flexible person in the world. And basically in this variation, we push the knees further forward, which puts more of the load into the legs and it doesn't require you to use as much flexibility from your shoulders and your upper back. Yeah, and then once you unlock the low bridge rotation, then you just work on trying to get it higher and higher over time. And the way you make it higher and higher is you take more load out of the legs, putting more of the force into the shoulders requiring more flexibility. I love bridge rotations. I think they're really like a beautiful movement. Is that okay to say? It's in the eye of the beholder. <laughs> True, but it's objectively really aesthetic. <laughs> So anyways, <laughs> it not only is beautiful, but it's also really fun to do. Like it mm. gets you, it gets you kind of moving in ways that you never really thought your body would move before. Yeah. And what's cool is like that could lead you to become interested in maybe some other things like capoeira, dance. Like this is a foundational movement in a lot of those practices. So true. Yeah. Who knows where it goes? Yeah. This, it can help your yoga, your capoeira, your dance, other martial arts too. So do your bridge rotations. Do them. Gymnastics too. Gymnastics. <laughs> I knew I was missing one. Is it my turn? We really like a lot of flexibility goals because we just see a lot of people are stiff and that's what they need. But it is also really important to be strong. It's functional to be strong. Mm -hmm. So having a two times body weight deadlift could be a really good goal to take on this year. Yeah, and once again, depending on your level and what you've prioritized in your recent training, this could seem like really, really challenging or it could seem easy. Yeah, and ultimately the two times body weight thing, fairly arbitrary. Setting that goal for yourself, it's just, it's just something to put on the horizon to steer your ship. Mm. but just keep getting stronger just keep getting stronger deadlift and like i guarantee you you'll get there someday if you just stay after it yeah and when it comes for bang for your buck exercises pff, hard to beat the deadlift for strength i mean it's just raw power and strength lifting something up from the ground and it'll put a lot of muscle on your backside yeah and that's Probably one of the reasons why to do deadlifts is because a lot of us get so disconnected from our posterior chain. So mm. to be able to get better at that and to use your backside can really bring up your posture. It can bring up just like imbalances that you have going on. I think it's important to remember though with any of these goals is some semblance of balance is important. So if you want to take on the deadlift, maybe you should also be working on some flexibility goals or some skill goals as well, not just focused on this one thing because that could lead to stiffness. Yeah, so if you can do two times your body weight deadlift and palms to floor from this list, you're gonna be a pretty well-balanced athlete. A lot of people think that we're mostly stretching guys and that we do some calisthenics and stuff, but like this summer we had some, a lot of fun doing some heavy deadlifts and we've put a lot of work there over the years. <laughs> Too much. <laughs> so my best advice, don't become a power lifter, but get stronger in the deadlift. So last but not least, I wanted to round this list off with giving something that's a little bit acrobatic. So like flips and stuff? Yes and no. Not quite a flip. Tell me more. <laughs> <laughs> so the macaco is a movement where you get that flip sensation, but you don't actually leave the ground. You go into a squat-like position, then put a hand behind you, and then you kind of jump your body you do this in the air <laughs> like this <laughs> which is really scary and really challenging and something that you should be really careful with but the great thing about the macaco is it's scalable you don't start by jumping over the top no 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 it's cool because you can actually just basically jump to the side yes just start with something super small and then over probably hopefully weeks or months don't just go right into it you just make it a little bigger over time and uh, eventually you're going over the top. It's another one of those goals that requires you to work on a lot of different components of your body. Strength, flexibility, timing, control. You might have to work on your flexibility to get the macaco or you might have to work on the strength of your shoulder mm. in these kind of end ranges position, end range positions. But ultimately it's a skill and you can just keep practicing it. Yeah and one of the big ones that 
you have to work towards is the fear component and building up courage. And that's one of the big benefits of doing something acrobatic is this process of learning and of like nudging yourself bit by bit towards having the confidence and feeling safe enough in your body to be able to do the movement. That's one thing I think we've learned through all the different Mm, hobbies and things we've taken on is dealing with fear on a regular basis is actually really important I think in both of our lives mm. and you definitely have to learn how to work with fear you don't want to just launch into it because that's how you get injured but you do want to put yourself in positions where you can slowly nudge that fear level yeah. further and further yeah yes and i think one of the reasons why we made this list is because learning is so important to being a human being problem solving figuring something out this is not only like super fulfilling when you actually accomplish the task but it puts you in deeper levels of flow yeah i think it's really easy to get complacent in like the movements you're doing you know you go to the gym and there's everyone's kind of always doing the same things so you either you do cardio or you do the conversion conventional lifts, but getting outside of that, getting uncomfortable can be that thing that pushes you forward and makes you grow. So these are 10 movements that you could have some fun with playing with this year. Take on whichever ones inspire you and seem exciting. Like the video, see you in the next one.